Hello and welcome to another module of the Paid Traffic series. In this module, you'll learn about solo ads. This module equips you with the relevant information to generate traffic via solo ads. First, the basics. What are solo ads? To make it simple, solo ads is a form of advertisement sent out to an entire or a portion of an email subscriber list. The rule is you are purchasing your intended audience or targeted traffic in the form of a mailing list. Your main goal is to drive them to your landing page. You may also purchase solo ads to promote an affiliate link. Where do you find your targeted audience on your intended mailing list? Generally, when you have ideal audiences in mind, you have two choices. You may deal with a solo owner where they have already established their own mailing list in a specific niche. You may also contact an ads broker who acts as an agent for this business. This will be further discussed in the following modules. When you purchase a solo ad, the emails sent to your audiences are dedicated emails. This means the emails revolve entirely around the product or service you intend to promote. The emails are focused on a particular niche area depending on the product or service advertised. This may range from the selling of supplements to fitness campaigns. In a nutshell, solo ads work best for those intending to drive quick traffic in large numbers. This can be applied in context where you are about to launch a product or if you need traffic to be sent to a web page immediately. In the next module, we'll be talking about how solo ads work in detail and how and where to purchase your solo ads. Hi there and welcome back to the Solo Ads series. In this module, you'll learn how to generate and purchase your traffic via solo ads, specifically focusing on solo owners. Mentioned in the previous module, in order to search for your intended mailing list, there are two approaches. One, solo owners. Two, solo ad brokers. What's the difference between the two? Solo owners are individuals who own their own solo ads. They've established their own mailing lists where they will sell a solo ad to you, and it's dependent on your market. Usually, solo owners will charge you by cost per click, or CPC. This depends on how many customers are interested and click on your email for further information. Having said that, there are some downsides in opting to purchase your traffic from solo owners. As the name suggests, solo owners are only solo owners. Initially, most of them do have a specific mailing list for marketing and business purposes, but as their mailing list expands, many people inquire to purchase their lists where they have turned it into their main niche. Therefore, they are only interested in making money by selling their lists. Sometimes it's even possible that their mailing list doesn't even correspond to the advertisement that you intend to sell. This means you may be wasting your resources as you're promoting your product to the wrong audience. Secondly, certain markets or niches have very few solo owners as the market can be relatively new or it's not been explored much by consumers. For instance, markets that cater towards very specific products for very specific audiences. Example, supplements to control the sugar level of diabetes patients. As a result, you may find some difficulties in generating or finding suitable mailing lists for you via solo owners. Another drawback is, as the solo owners are charging you based on CPC, the conversions may be low. As stated earlier, some of the mailing lists would not entirely hit the bullseye for you as the audiences are a mismatch. Now, you've understood solo owners. In the next module, we cover another vehicle to generate your traffic, which is solo ads brokers. Hey there and welcome back. We explore another initiative to generate your traffic which is based on solo ads brokers. By the end of this module, you'll be able to weigh your choices in generating traffic. What are solo ads brokers and how do they aid you in generating traffic? Solo ads brokers are individuals who may manage 20 to 30 mailing lists assigned by their respective owners. They observe the progress of each list carefully. They're also known as the agents of solo ads, just like how real estate agents function in the property investment scene. They know which lists are active and which aren't. They also have an idea of the list's interests and how many clicks are made per list. 
They are paid by the list owners and they will usually charge you a base on cost per thousand CPM. Therefore, you don't have to worry about the cost as it is highly unlikely for them to charge you unreasonably. How do we measure CPM? CPM is a jargon referring to the cost of media vehicle reaching 1,000 audience. We will be discussing that in more detail in the following module. Usually, how solo brokers work is they advertise you on the traffic you should purchase based on available lists. When you test run your solo ad and you find it is not generating the amount of traffic you want, you can always go back and discuss about the problem that you're facing to your solo brokers. They are more than willing to help and compensate for your loss by doing what they call a make good, where they'll try to improve the situation. They'll either provide you with another mailing list or they'll give you discounts in your future purchases. It is in their nature to ensure that their customers have a good experience. That's because their goal is to sell as many lists as possible to the right market, and they want their customers to come back and make another purchase with them in the future. They want to be in the business for the long haul. This kind of transaction is also made available through Facebook Solo Ads Group. It can be a public or a closed group. In a particular group, there will be solo ads brokers or vendors as well as the buyers. The brokers advertise the lists that they sell. Meanwhile, the customers who purchase the lists can publish testimonials on the group's page. Therefore, the members of the group will get direct feedback and this will enable them to weigh their selection of lists. Examples of solo ads, Facebook groups are as follows. 1. Solo ads and funnel clicks market. 2. Solo ads, ad swaps, and email marketing. Again, one of the drawbacks is that solo ads brokers are also dependent on the market. You need to scout around to ensure you're dealing with the right broker where they provide you with the intended audience. Different markets have different solo ads brokers. Don't waste your resources by making the wrong choice. Hi there and welcome back. In this module, we provide you with the golden rules to ensure your solo ad success. The two rules focused on in this chapter are to identify your target audience and secondly, to be specific in your advertising. When you intend to launch a product or service, you have your own target audience in mind. Without any consumers, there's no reason for you to even think about the product in the first place. The same case applies in solo ads. You have to know which market to focus on and whom you are servicing. The first golden rule, identify your target audience and be familiar with their demographics. For instance, if you're selling skincare products that specialize in getting rid of acne, the questions you want to ask yourself are, which age group are you focusing on? Are you focusing on males, females, or both? What type of products are they purchasing? What sites are they interested in and looking at? It's important to identify these factors as it will aid you in being more specific towards your advertisement goals. As a result, you're able to effectively generate the kind of traffic you want. By identifying your market, you're also able to select the market where people congregate for a specific cause or interest. After you've identified your target audience and you find a mailing list that works for you, Remember to keep going two times bigger than your previous round. For instance, if you purchase 50 subscribers on a list and it works for you, continue with 100 subscribers for the next round. Continue to do the same each round until you have accumulated your ideal list for your advertisements. But always remember to not drastically go for a huge solo ad if you're relatively new to the scene. The strategy is to scale it small and to go bigger each time. This way, you don't waste your resources on gaining unwanted subscribers. Now, the second golden rule is to be specific in your advertising. A lot of rookie solo ad users happen to be vague in what they're selling, thus confusing the audience. First and foremost, be clear of your purpose or goals of the email. Do not confuse the readers by making them wonder what your offer is. Clarity is key. Cut to the chase. Another important pointer to note is to stay true to why the audience opted into your list. For instance, when your solo ad directs them to your squeeze page, make sure that they get what they came for. If your squeeze page is giving additional information on your skincare product, don't send them an ad on slimming pills. Yes, it happens. When you fail to deliver relevant information to your audience, it can go two ways. 
they either hit the unsubscribe button or worse, report you as spam. It's important to not only generate and drive traffic to your page, but to sustain and build up your lists as well. Hey there and welcome back to the Solo Ad Series. In this module, we'll be focusing on another golden rule where you can't afford to miss, which is knowing your numbers. When we talk about numbers, it all boils down to two major components. One, identifying the cost to purchase your solo ads. Two, tracking your progress. In any business, it's vital to identify the costs invested in your product or service. This is to ensure that you adhere to the budget and do not go overboard as a result, wasting your resources. When you have invested, the next step would be tracking your progress to identify if your investment generated profit or loss. Now, some people may think it's unnecessary to track your progress when you're only dealing with solo ads, but trust me, it pays to be systematic and calculative, especially if you want to go big. First and foremost, let's identify the cost to purchase your solo ads. When purchasing solo ads, you are usually charged based on cost per thousand. That's CPM. CPM is a marketing jargon and is the most common method in pricing web ads. It refers to the cost of a media vehicle reaching 1,000 people in audience. Some solo ad sites will charge you based on their fixed rate. For instance, it'll cost you $1,500 to advertise to a mailing list of a specific size. The M in CPM represents the Roman numeral for 1,000. The CPM formula is as follows. Cost of one unit of media program divided by size of media program audience times 1,000. Let's illustrate an example. The mailing list size for Market A is 100,000. The price for a solo ad referring to Market A is $10,000. Therefore, your CPM would be calculated as follows. CPM equals $10,000 divided by 100,000 times 1,000, which equals $100. This means it will cost you $100 to reach a 1,000 audience in Market A. The cost to purchase your solo ads is dependent on the market. But remember, our rule is to start small and grow bigger as you go. Do not pay a fortune if you are still new to the scene. After you've paid for the cost and your ads are up and running, it's time to track your progress. What you need to do is create your own method for tracking, where this can be effectively done with Microsoft Excel. Get to know your numbers and most importantly, your results. Did you hit the target? If you did, then congrats. If you did not, then this is when you backtrack and detect what went wrong. You should track your progress based on the following points. Number of clicks on your landing page, sales accumulated, pending sales, the cost of advertising, profit gained, net results. Always remember, numbers don't lie. We've come to the final chapter of the Solo Ad series. In this final module, you'll be testing out your ads. From the previous modules, we said to test small and scale small. As a beginner, it is unrealistic for you to be too ambitious and spend your resources on a market you're uncertain of. The first try is always the hardest and it won't guarantee you the results you wished for. Therefore, be strategic in your solo ad journey and test run your solo ads frequently through a small sample. For instance, when you found a particular mailing list that suits your market and the sample size is 100,000, what should you do? For the first run, you should only take up to 10% of the solo ad block, which means you select 10,000 lists from the entire block. This gives you the chance to track your progress and observe your performance. You are able to identify if the solo ad is in fact the suitable market for you. If it didn't work out the way you planned, devise a new plan and improve. Most important, you are not taking a risk you can't afford to handle as you are scaling it small. When you figured out the game and set up your game plan, my suggestion is to gradually increase your solo ads by 10%. Do not scale it up drastically. Remember, consistency and sustainability is always key. As mentioned earlier, from the 100,000 subscribers, you have had your test run of 10%.
continue to purchase the next 10% from the same block and test run your ad again. If you found out it is working for you, then go for the next 10%. This is how you should test run and scale your solo ad if you're relatively new in the internet marketing scene. Keep going and increase your momentum by 10%. Once you've got the hang of it, it's smooth sailing from there. Test small, scale small, and then go bigger.